Creek Sunday, the first Sunday after Pentecost, we are glad to be back together with you in Parish Hall. We hope that you are ready for this service as we are. And we invite you in this time this morning and for every 9 a.m. service to have communion at home with us when we come to that place in the service. I'm so happy to have my colleagues, Reverend Emily Corzine and Mark Williams and Kevin Jones and Mark Danke here as we record and share this word with you today. We hope that you take time to rest today, to soak in the Spirit today, and to embrace this opportunity to worship together. Later in the service, we'll have a chance to share our offering. So take a look at your bulletin that you can find on the website at www.first-church.org at the worship section. And so follow along, join along, sing along, pray along with us. Welcome to worship at First Church. This is the day which God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O God, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God. As it was in the beginning, it is now and will be forever. Amen. Genesis, 
what God was creating everything and God was creating us and he said it is good and then we know that God sent our Redeemer Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and he sent to be blessed for us to go out into the world and share God's love all of that came through and I thought delight God is delighted in us he loves us now that's a big word so let me help you figure this out. So it's delight. <laughs> Get it? Delight. God loves us. And so you need to be a delight as well. And let God's light, God's light, shine through you every single day. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you for the delight of you loving us. Grant us courage and wisdom and help us to let your light shine through us to delight others. Amen. See you next week. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome, from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together God called the seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, Plants yielding seed of every kind, and the trees of every kind bearing the fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, 
Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, God created them. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird in the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that God had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that God had done. And God rested on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Therefore, go and make 
make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Saturday at the Statehouse. They were all gathered peacefully. 
Everybody was, was being kind and sweet to each other. And as she was in the middle of the crowd, a can of tear gas came in, and then another, and then another, and then horses moved in. Some of the reporting that went forward that day said everybody was striking out against the police, and she said, that's not what I saw at all. So here we are. Maybe that happened, maybe it didn't. But the point is, I believed my storyteller. I believed my Alicia, right? And so I believed that she was there for peace, continued to be at peace, and act in peace. So when you have two different versions of the story, sometimes we want to side with one or another. But in Genesis, we're given this version of God's creation story that is all about goodness and ends in Sabbath rest. Now, what some of you don't know is that Mr. Mark is like my conscience. He's always reminding me of the Sabbath. I'm looking over at him now and he's nodding his head. He's telling all of us, you've got to breathe. You've got to find a place for yourself to be at peace. So on this Sabbath day, I want you to find a place today. A place today that is your own. In prayer, in stillness, just breathe. Soak in the beauty of the earth around you today. Today, may this be Sabbath for you. And even God takes a day off, we find in the story of Genesis. So if we don't take time for ourselves, one thing we're saying is we're better than God. And that's a version of a story right there. But it's true. We've got to take the time we need and we're given. So in God's story of life and goodness and breath and spirit and rest, we're given a lot of hope. Jesus comes along. Uh, one, one more thing I need to say is there's a word that has always bugged me in the story of Genesis. Very short, because you know I can go on and on about words. But the word is dominion. It says in there that we're given dominion over another, over the earth. The actual word translated from the Hebrew is you are given the caretaking of the earth. We have been given this planet to be caretakers of it. We've been given one another full of life and hope and breath and rest to be caretakers of one another. And that's what I love about my colleagues, my family who look out. And we hopefully do that for one another too. Finally, I just want to say, the last thing on this Trinity Sunday is there's two words that get stuck sometimes for me, and they are never and always. Now, I will tell you, if I have my worst day, on my worst arguments with my best friends, I will use the word never and always inappropriately. Sometimes I'll say, you never do this, or you always do that. Now, I know none of you have ever had a day like that or ever used those words Never use those words that way. I know you always do it right. But, just say, if this speaks to you, listen carefully. Because the use of the word always is a gift from Jesus Christ to all of us in the text of the gospel today. He says, think of this, he says, I will always, always be with you. I will not leave you alone. From every generation, I will be with you. And in these pandemic times, in these racially tested and tense and volatile times where people are at each other, the, the words of Jesus of comfort and hope and his always is what I always need. So I hope we treasure that word today. And on this Trinity Sunday, when we're talking about the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I hope, too, that we carry these three words in our hearts. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love.
We give you thanks for his presence among us. Because he lives, we look to you for eternal life, knowing that nothing past, present, or yet to come can separate us from your great love, made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. This day we offer prayers on behalf of this church, the community, and the world. We pray now for the individual needs and concerns and thanksgivings of, these con of this congregation and members, friends, and family who are listed in our Depart to Serve and whom we hold in our hearts. This day, O oh God, we pray for our community. We acknowledge the systemic racism in our history. We pray for all who are afraid. Give us courage to speak up against all racism and to repent of our own. Help us to share the good news of God's love and peace and justice so that your waters of justice may roll down like an ever-flowing stream. God, we pray for our nation. For a nation divided, we pray for our leaders on all levels. We pray for our president, governors, mayor, other elected officials. We pray for your church. May faith leaders guide us and guide those who are lost and alone, who are searching and seeking direction to you, who can transform their lives. May the church be one of true sanctuary and encouragement. And we pray your church will lead those to justice and reconciliation from our shortcomings. We pray for those who are affected by COVID-19, especially George Miller, who passed away, the father of Jonathan and grandfather of Finn. We lift to you all medical workers, essential workers who face these challenges on a daily basis for Kristen and Randy. We pray for those in our own faith community, O oh God, Martha, Fran, Lindy, Paul, Reverend Earl Fritz and Pauline Fritz, for Arlene, Jean and Lee, for Matt and Rhonda, and their children, Chelsea and Kevin. We pray for our family and friends, for Rebecca, Paul, Tito, Amy, Joyce, Eileen, Calvin, Michael, and Stefan. We pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones, including Sean, Helen, and John, for Ella, for Mark, for Pat, and Chelsea, for Sam and his family. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world. Heal the hurts of all your children. Bring about your peace for all in Jesus Christ. And in the silence of our hearts, we lift to you those names and situations on our hearts. Almighty God, in Christ you have embraced all life through the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Pour out your grace upon us that we may love all, love of life, as you have loved us. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who Amen. art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Eternal God, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The mission offering this morning goes to support the work of the Coalition of Immokalee Workers. It's a worker-based human rights organization internationally known for its achievements in fighting human trafficking and gender-based violence. Each Sunday we take an offering for a mission or ministry supporting issues of justice and mercy. The Coalition of Immokalee Workers has been hit hard by COVID-19 and their inability to socially distance and proper hygiene um, and diminished access to testing.
they have been hit hard. So our work and our donations this morning go to support their continued efforts to keep their community safe during this time and continue to fight for human rights. Please give generously.
God, we give you thanks for the food now before us. May it nourish us this day and always. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink it, remember me. And as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
touch with Reverend Aaron's or Reverend Corzine for emergency pastoral care or naming a prayer request, please call 614-733-4547. This number is listed in the Department of Search Rubric. And Reverend Tim has an announcement. Two announcements. First, uh, the Bible study on Acts, all of the students in there, all 15, decided today they want to continue. So I'm honoring that, and we'll continue next Wednesday. You'll see more about that. Important for everyone to know, this week, the big give happens. We have 25 hours from 10 a.m. June 10th to 11 a.m. June 11th to give in three areas toward our pledge toward Good Samaritan and the help of those in our community in greatest need and toward the equipment needed to continue and improve and enhance the worship that we have been doing. So this is our chance to increase the gift by going to the Columbus Foundation. You'll see information on it, on the big gift. Please give. And I want to shout out to a member who stood up and led the charge this week by sending $30,000 to get this going. That's huge. The trustees will meet the challenges as we give. They'll match our dollars. You don't have to give all of that, but you can give 10, 20, or more to make a difference. It really will make a difference for the big give. Thank you very much. Just a reminder that your giving can be done through PayPal, Easy Tide, or simply writing a check and sending it in the mail. No matter how you are giving, be sure to mark it for the mission of the week or to the regular church budget. If you have not done so, please like us on the First Church Facebook page. There will be numerous postings through this time for engagement, activities, and devotion. So please monitor your email, the church website, and Facebook page. We invite you to the virtual coffee hour after the service today. You will find the link in the Department of Serve Leaflet. We also encourage you to check on your neighbor in ways you may be helpful to them. Let us depart with our hearts to serve. Thanks be to God. God.